Welcome to Strategy Battle Gamers to another GBIT Show YouTube channel video. You hear your channel host, GBIT Show James. And GBIT Show Jamie, and it's okay. the end of Free People's Week, nearly. End of reviews of Free People's Week. End of the reviews, we're just going to try and get a battle report in for yeah. you guys to yeah. enjoy. Dwarves versus High Elves, I know you're mm -hmm. all looking forward to that one. Um, so we are coming on to the last two segments, we are going to bunch them together. Um, yeah. It's the... That starts with the... It's the Wanderers in the Wild and the White Council, and we'll discuss the profiles from the White Council that we haven't yet discussed, as there is a bunch of them mm -hmm. who we've previously discussed who can come into this list. Certainly is. Okay, so we do start off with the Wanderers in the Wild, so this represents sort of all of those miscellaneous The, the, the people that you know who don't really fit into anything. <laughs> The outcasts of Middle-earth. Yeah, Earth. basically. They are a little bit, yeah, they are a little bit. Uh, and it starts off with the, the main enigma, really. Yeah, the, the, the big two. Oh, uh, hang on. He can be banished. He's a spirit. Yeah. Oh, it doesn't affect by him. God, I thought I'd found a way that didn't uh, involve a million circles. Sorry. <laughs> it's it Bombadil. Tom Bombadil, he's a spirit. So, uh, here's move six. Mm -hmm. Here's fight value question mark, strength question mark, defense question mark, attacks question mark, wounds question mark, Courage question mark, might will fate question mark, question mark, asterisk question mark. So what does that mean? <laughs> is, is, there are, I've got many questions out there. Is 160 points though? So okay, it's very expensive for so, for so, mystery uh, stats. War gear. Tom wears great yellow boots, a blue coat, and an old battered hat with a tall crown and a long blue feather stuck in his band. Tom is armed with a large leaf, which uh, can, you can fate with. Uh, on which he carries a small pile of water lilies and counts as being unarmed. He's unarmed. No, we no weapons to break on him. Doesn't sound particularly good so far. No. Nope. Uh, special rules. Tom is the master. Tom treats all kinds of difficult terrain as open and always gets a result of six on the jump and climb tests. Some say that the trees and rocks move aside to let him through. So, so far, you should be getting an idea here of what is effectively a very fluffy player. Uh, Tom can't be harmed by ranged attacks. This means that all magical powers have no effect on him at all, and missiles that hit Tom disappear and are discarded. Uh, Sounds nails, actually, all yeah, of a sudden yeah. now. <laughs> uh, no models can move into Tom's control zone unless the good player allows them to. This includes models moved by a sorcerer's blast spell. Uh, Tom can charge enemy models normally, and his side will always win any fight Tom's a part of, but they can't strike blows. Um, and all good models will pass Gary's chest within three inches of him. And also, uh, Tom can expend one point of will each per turn, with a special will laughing be merry, and he has a magical power. Okay. Which is called Hey Come Merry Doll. Range three inches, uh, it's a two plus to use, and Tom can instantly heal the body and mind of his friends, and he can regain a point of might, a point of will, a point of fate, and a wound lost earlier in the battle. Now that is very, very good. It also immediately recovers them from the effects of any enemy magical power. Very, very, very so, strong. Just for that magical power, he is a huge support role. Yeah. And will keep your heroes fighting. He can't be killed. No. Nope. Except with circles and... Well, that, Circles. Circles and a trench that he wants to walk into. Yeah, that he chooses to, yeah, to chooses plunge into. I, I do, I do find, I did find that discussion one of the, one of the best. I think. Yeah, just like how can we kill Tom Bombadil? Well, <laughs> how to kill him because he, he can't be touched. He can't yeah. be touched, which can make it very difficult when he's inserted into certain types of lists, which is yeah. where you tend to see him. So where do we tend to see Tom Bombadil? He'll appear in all hero lists because mm -hmm. obviously he can just keep them going, keep them going. Uh, and he'll, he'll sort of charge the things that the heroes can't deal with yet. Yeah. Yeah, so the heroes can sort of chomp their way through what they need to chomp through while he just pins stuff yeah. down, uh, which is pretty handy. Great anti smog Yeah. Charge Smaug, I win this turn. And then just keep hitting up someone behind you. Quick, call a heroic move. In goes Bombadil. Quick, call a heroic move. <laughs> Every time, yeah. Yeah, and pin him down. Just move him, move him away an inch a turn. <laughs> Go away. <laughs> Get off this objective. Down a chasm. Yeah. <laughs> How to kill Smaug. Push get Bombadil. Yeah. yeah. Somebody draw the circles of this. Get Bombadil. Yeah. Just get Smaug to back away towards yeah. the chasm. Yeah. Yeah, I can play this game too. Yeah. Down you go, Smaug. Down you go. Yeah, and, and we have seen him, um, not just in sort of your standard all here on this, but you tend to see him with like the likes of a tree beard or like a Boromir or like yeah. the killy stuff. Or uh, we used him with um, with wizards. Yep. Sort of blast. They can channel blast every turn and, poof, and then get the will points back. Yep. He seems really inc incredibly powerful, but he is expensive. He is expensive, he can't be a general, he's an independent hero. And it's 160 points that can't hurt your opponent. Yep. So you've got to really have something there that will 
he'll benefit to win the game, basically. Yeah. Uh, with him, if you take him, you can take Goldbury. Oh, Goldbury. Goldbury has the exact same stat line, which is 140 points. Mm -hmm. uh, she is the River Daughter, so Goldbury cannot be harmed by ranged attacks, the exact same as Bombadil. Uh, no evil models uh, can move into Goldbury's control zone uh, at all, ever. Goldbury can't even let them in. Okay. Uh, Goldbury and all the models within six inches of her automatically pass all courage tests. Mm -hmm. uh, Goldberg cannot be used in a force that does not include Tom Bombadil, and she's got the exact same song as uh, yeah. Tom Bombadil, though. She can recover Might Will Fate yep. and a wound and effects of the enemy. Well, so really, you're looking there and you're thinking, well, that's 300 points. 300 points to recover two Might, two Will, two Fate, two wounds every turn. That's a big chunk of your And points. block off certain avenues to, get to charge in as well. I mean, in what situation would that be worth it? Tom Bombadil, Goldberry, and Bayon and Bearforth. Uh, yeah, but we'll, we'll stopping them being trapped and just constantly. How how we used it was we took uh, Tom Bombadil, Goldberry, they threw a thousand point doubles, um, Glorfindel, Saruman, Gandalf the Grey, all mounted, mm -hmm. um, Boromir of uh, the White Tower. Yeah, because he's very killy with his lance, his lance and yeah, horse, horse. And, and yeah, so we we basically used it. Then. Um, the two combat ones to just charge in, mm -hmm. break face, come back out, get healed up, go back in. Yeah. And the wizard to be there blasting and immobilising. Did it work? Uh, we, we played JT and we won. Uh, we played Ed and Sam and Sam carried Ed to victory. Uh, Tom Bombadil killed the uh, Ringwraith. He killed a Ringwraith? He killed the Ringwraith because the Ringwraith obviously died when they were out of will and he wins every fight he's in. So you just <laughs> Die please. <laughs> go away Ringwraith. <laughs> So how did you lose that game? Uh, it was high ground, oh, and so Sam, had, Sam had like 70 goblins. Okay, and this is a key point to come in and say this is where this kind of list will struggle. Yeah. So it's an objective game. It's a, uh, whenever there's objectives about it, these guys, whilst they can live and live on an objective and not be pushed off or anything, you all you need is three more guys there. Mm -hmm. Might be worthwhile for uh, Nova Open. Mm -hmm. For put those two on the hill. That's 300 points. He can't move off. <laughs> you're so bad. <laughs> you're the way oh. your brain moves is so bad. I know. <laughs> Evil man. But that's 300 points that they think they can't do nothing about. I know. <laughs> it's like no, no. <laughs> that's awful. And that's 300 points of their army that they need to then sit on the hill with you. Yeah. Put bail on there. Yeah. So then we got a Tom and Goldberry. I don't like to send me. I'm not gonna send. Not to send you. I've got a Tom and Goldberry though. You're you gonna bail on do. I don't want bail on. It's a waste of time. No, you won't. No, it's a waste. Of time. Waste of. Time. It's so good. It's so fun. Just he, he do his uh, his his hug against Smaug. He's not got any fate. Crunch, crunch, crunch. Come on, twenty more rolls. Yeah. Yeah. We could do it. That's that's how you kill Smaug. <laughs> Tom Goldberg. Bayon hugs into death. <laughs> <laughs> uh, next up, we've got Treebeard. Oh, I love Treebeard. Gorgeous model as well. Yeah, very Absolutely nice. stunning model. Uh, 190 points. So he's quite expensive. Yeah, he's but he gets a stat line to represent. Uh, yeah, he probably one of the most powerful actual stat lines. Yes, yeah. He's, a, he's an Ent and a monster, so he gets the access to brutal power attacks. Mm -hmm. A rarity for good. It certainly is. So suddenly you've got someone who can do all your hills, your bends, and your barges. Yeah. So think about that one then. <laughs> He's got movement six. Which we talked about in the previous video, or speak from a question, wasn't it? We... I think it might have been speak from a question. Yeah, yeah uh, we, would, we would like to see him be eight inches. If you say eight inches, then he would have a much bigger effect on the game, and it yeah. can be one of the things that limits this guy, as big and awesome as he is. He has fight value eight. That's an incredible fight value. Four plus shoot value, which only really comes in when you, if you choose to hurl stones, which new people like to do, I find, yeah, when they bring cool. ends and stuff, because it seems cool. Um, he's strength 8, that's phenomenal, so that's going to yeah, freeze yeah. on a lot of stuff. Freeze on, and hurling very far. And hurling very far. Uh, defense 8, so hard to take down, 3 attacks, 3 wounds, curry 7, 3 might, 6 will, just like a wizard, and 3 fate. That is a strong profile. Very, very good profile. Very, very it's strong profile. Just a shame about movement 6. It is a shame about movement 6. Um, so he's got some special rules, he causes terror, which is obviously good against non-fury evil. And low courage good. And low courage good. Wooden creature, of course. Yep. However, his base does not fit in between the Citadel wood bits, so therefore he cannot move through them. Not, not usually through woods very well, can he? <laughs> Sadly. Because of his big base, because he can't just move through trees. Um, he can break stone, so this is relevant if you're playing a siege game. So if you're one of the uh, handful who went to... Did anybody, did anybody take that to siege in Cardiff? Take not that I'm aware ants? of. 
Yeah. That's what I would have done. Take an Ents. And just smack From Shadow and Flame. Yeah. Just, just, just done that. Take an Ents and Treebeard. Um, and that's resolved at strength 10, which if you go nine about seed rules, that's pretty good. You can also throw a stone. You can throw stones, uh, just like a, a crossbow, if he doesn't move, you can stoop for a stone, throw it, range of 18 inches, strength of 10, so... If, 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 you've, if you've got the kind of army that needs what to, if you've got the army, the kind of army that is static and you know wants the enemy to come to you, then you know it can you be worth keep, keep throwing it at the target and force them to come. And you know if you're going for any hero, yeah, you know that kind of hit's going to be pretty good. I've had three birds throw stuff at Alfred before. Um, uh, Alfred, <laughs> did he kill him? Yeah, probably. Yeah. Uh, and he also has uh, the bonuses with throwing that against. Castle walls as yeah, well. Of course, of course. <laughs> Lovely model, really nice. And there are two versions. Hello, Darren. Hello. <laughs> um, he's he's got two models. One's got Mary and Pippin on. Yeah. Well, I think it's the same model. You can build him either way. I didn't really want to come to me. I didn't have the double bits on top. Are you I, sure? I thought there were pieces that you could put in to change. Oh, the really? Ones. I didn't know this. I, mine was missing. Ah. Games Workshop, please will you send me something free? I'm pretty certain anyway. No, I'm, I'm probably wrong. I don't, I don't know. Him. I always thought that was the case. He's a lovely model. Dead easy to paint as well for dry brushing and everything. And there's some nice ones out there. If you look on the One Ring Painting Challenge. No, he tends to pop up from time to time. Yeah. Next up. Controversial kind of uh, kind of profile, really. I think Guahir. people like the idea of taking him, don't yeah. they? Well, who, Guahir or Treebeard? Uh, no, Guahir. Guahir, yeah. So next up we've got Guahir. 125 points. Which, when you see his stat line, the first bit, you think that's Yeah, the first half of it is pretty decent. So, movement 12, because he flies. That's Fantastic. Good. The fly is obviously really yeah. good. Uh, fight 8, so high fight. Strength 6, a little bit on the low side for a monster. Uh, defense 8, 2 attacks, 3 wounds, crush 6. And his real letdown, one might, one will, one fate. Certainly is. There's lots of things that can kind of stop him from being good. Oh, that was so cute. <laughs> <laughs> the stop him from, from, being, um, from being good quite early on. It can't yeah. really have the same kind of effect as other heroes do <laughs> when they're around 100 points. Yeah, yeah. Especially when it gets later into the game and he's used that might, will, and fate. He can just end up being a monster. Yeah, and the other downside to him is that uh, Guaje can only... Um, Ben his stand fast and heroic actions only benefit other great eagles. Yeah, which is is not fantastic. No, it's not fantastic at all. Not not really. There's a common idea that you take Alfred along with Guahe so you get the Guahe you deserve for yep. 145 points, which is probably decent then. Yeah, it's, you know, it's, it's, it's probably not too bad. I think if he gets up to four, might he's all right. He's but can do what he wants to do. One of the key things that really lets him down is the two attacks. Now, there's yeah. always been that argument for Eagles, and it's probably a good time to say it. The Eagles don't quite... They don't quite cut it, do they? Don't quite cut it, despite they had, the fact that they're very good. If they have three attacks base, they'd be well, well good. If they have three attacks base, or they would count, count as monstrous mounts. Yeah, if it, well, monstrous mounts when charging. When charging, yeah. Just like a fell beast. Yeah, just like a fell beast, because then you've got plus one and you've got a knockdown as well. Yeah. And then I think that uh, Wahoo would be worth it. Yes, yeah, I definitely. think it would be worth it. And then we've got someone down the complete other end of the pay scale. <sighs> Woohoo! Uh, one of your favourites? Yeah, Garnbury Garn. Garn. 45 Garn. points. So very, very cheap. What do you get for 45 points, Giblin? You get movement 6, fight 4, strength, uh, sorry, 3 plus shoot value, strength 4, defence 4, 2 attacks, 2 wounds, courage 4, 3 might, 1 will, 1 fate. Yeah. 3 might, 45 points. Very cheap, 15 ah. points a might point. That's pretty good. you got a strength 4 model there, he's got a low fight value, 2 attacks isn't too bad though, no. 2 wounds, the uh, captainish kind of profile, but yeah. 3 might. 3 might is the key for him. 3 might is the key. He also has a bucket full of special rules. He comes with a spear and a bo poison blowpipe. Uh, poison blowpipe, uh, 12 inch range, can't move and shoot, uh, strength of 2, and re rolls once to wound. Okay, so that's really good. Decent. Uh, woodland creature, hate orc folk, Garnbury Garn adds plus 1 to the dice for rolling to wound against orcs, goblins, and orokai. And you're probably going to come up against some of those at the tournament. In close combat. And Garnbury Garn counts as wearing an elven cloak. Now that is handy, yeah. especially with that three might. He's actually going to really going to be able to affect the game. For yeah, your infantry battle. Sit, line. Sits behind the line, and then where it moves when he needs to. It certainly does. For forty-five points, absolute winner in terms of value for might points. You know, so so cheap. Um, you know, you, you, you're in that air win realm, really, aren't you? Yeah. In terms of who's giving you sort of the best value for might points. Grinners. 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 Gr Grinner one. I think cheapest. What, what, what does he? What's he give? I think he's. What is he? Forty points and gives three. Wow. 
Yeah, that's like good. 12.3 from that point. That's pretty good, it's pretty good. Uh, so Gambo again, um, still still available as yeah, part yeah. of Wozy Box. So you get nine metal yeah. Wozy's. Nine, nine Wozy's and gun in the box. Which I think is pretty good value. I think it's £18.80 or something. I think that's pretty good value if you can do it. Yeah, okay. definitely. Darren's dying to come over and say hello. Like, <laughs> let me have him, let me have him. <laughs> uh, next up, we've got Bilbo Baggins. Well, do we see many Gambo guns and Wozy's? Oh, yeah, well, I see, I do. I see them all the time. You see them all the time because you decided to include them last year in your... With my 500 point elves. Yeah, and that was a reasonably new move, relatively new move. Wasn't yeah, it? Um, they had, I had like 100 points left, so I was never getting a full warband of elves, I get a hero and three, and I was like, well, who can I take with them? And I remember um, my friend Craig and my friend Harry both used to really, really enjoy Roses. Mm -hmm. I was like, well, let's have a look at the Roses. Oh God, yeah, they're, they're, that's why they took them. They're so cheap, they're so versatile. Okay, so next up we have... Bilbo! It's Bilbo, so what is your stat line, Bilbo? Oh, Bilbo, oh. you're awful. <laughs> 90 points, so 90 points. You're quite expensive, 90 points. I'm not sure. I'd... Yeah, no, he actually came to a lot more than 90 points. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, uh, 500 points. Yeah. <laughs> uh, fight three. Fight three. Three plus shoot, are you? Defense five. You're not, one attack. You're not a fighter, are you? Two wounds, crush six, all might, three will, three fate. The bravest little puppy of them all. Bilbo! <laughs> Bilbo! <laughs> yeah. uh, he can take Frodo's ring, sorry. Okay. If, if Frodo is not in the force, Bilbo can carry the ring. See page 45. And he has to pay, uh, take the and ring similar, uh, in the, with the same rules that Frodo With the Frodo, yeah, because if yes, yes uh, that's the ring. So yep. see page 45 for those rules. And he gets that for free, so he can take the ring if Frodo's not there. Yep. Uh, he carries Sting and wears the Mythical Coat, both bonuses are in there. However, he only goes to defence 5 with his missile coat, so he's quite, because he's old, he's yeah. defence 2, well, okay. and the coat takes him to defence 5, so he's not worth it in any sense. No, better than, better than Frodo in some ways, but he's very expensive for what you're getting. 90 points. 90 points. Think about all the other things you get for 90 points. Exactly. You get Legolas. You get Legolas for 90 points, and is Bilbo going to affect the game the same kind of way? He certainly is not. However, he doesn't, doesn't even get throw stones and resist to magic. It it doesn't even get that. What? Even though he's a hobbit, what does that? What? What does that mean? Yeah. Um, so yeah, Bilbo in the Wanderers of the Wildest isn't worth it. If you were going to take a Bilbo, you'd probably take one from the Hobbit list. Young Bilbo, Young who is not affected by the ring in any of the negative ways, and gets to half the opponent's fight value. Yeah, and, and can be very, very incredible. Useful. Yeah. And how how many points is he? Sixty. He's sixty points. Yeah, so you so take it's like that. Bilbo, Frodo, mm, Bilbo, all they like. Yeah, you always do that. And then we've got someone from history. Yes, who has been FAQ to be in the Shire, which we didn't talk about, which we mentioned. Right, well, okay, yeah. Because we'll be mentioning him in this So he one. can lead troops. He can lead troops, yeah. Okay, that's from the Shire list. Uh, this is Bandabrus the Bull Roarer Tuck. Oh, he's a legend in the Shire. Yeah, he is. He's Hobbit and he rides a horse. Mm -hmm. He's 40 points. Uh, movement 4, but the horse moves obviously moves 10. Yep. Uh, fight 3, strength 3, strong Hobbit. Mm -hmm. Defense 4, 2 attacks, 2 wounds, courage 4, 2 might, 1 wound fight. So a Hobbit captain. It's respectable. Yeah, he's, 40 points. he's all right. He's done three, he's not killing anything, but he, drink, he brings two might to the table. Yep, and if you're taking a Shire force, then you want to get as many heroes in there as possible. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, the only thing from not taking him, really, is the fact that he doesn't he's not at the same time. Yeah. Not at the same time. But pretty good and a gorgeous model. Very, very nice. Really nice yeah, miniature. Yeah. Have you got Band of Boris? No, I don't have many of the uh, Hobbit heroes besides the ones from the, the, book, uh, the, the box set. Absolutely stunning miniature. Um, you don't see, see, tend to see him that often. Unless people bring a Hobbit army. Hobbit army or Wonders and the Wild Army. Yeah, I've not, not seen him as part of the Wonders Army. I have, yeah. have you? With all the Wonders. Yeah. Like leading Wonders or leading. Leading Wonders. Yep. So, the Warriors for the Wonders in the Wild. I'm done with the heroes. It's done. That's so it. This is one video. Yeah. Uh, they have a Great Eagle, 90 points. Uh, fight 7, 4 plus shoot, strength 6, defense 8, 2 attacks, 3 wounds, courage 5, courage 5 when an Eagle. It's awful. Uh, they cause terror and they have fly. Yep. So, great fight value, great movement, 12 inches. Yep, they're, they're a monster, so... Defense, 8, 3 wounds, all good, but their courage, 5, is awful. Well, yeah, it's the same, well, we talk about um, elves having courage, 5, and that being good. The reason it's That's, awful for these... Is there's so many points, 90, and if they have to call, charge another terror causer, probably harbinger of evil, if it's an evil force, they're down to courage, 4. Yep. They're just not good enough. 
which it isn't great. Now their main downfall, um, although they, they do have a role, they're fast, they do have a role in the yeah, game, yeah, the yeah. main downfall is the two attacks. Yeah. The two attacks, so although they have got point value seven, it's reasonably easy to surround these guys and because of course there are no might stats in there, rely on them not getting the six. Yeah. With piercing strike, they go down easy. Where their use comes in is as an ally to another force, um, and you use them to, they, they go into something big, you get their fight seven in there, and then you swarm them with your troops. Yep. And they'd be the one that wins you the fight with the fight seven, and everyone, yep. everyone else does the killing. Yeah. You know, if you're trapped, four dice are ending, you're going to do something decent. Yeah, I, I completely agree that they can make a very, very, very good ally, yeah. uh, of course, and you do need someone who can lead them. But when you've got the likes of Gumbrigan, Gumbrigan takes them, some Moses, an eagle. Yeah, and he's done. That, that's, that's, that's how you get him in. Yeah, we certainly do. And that's not a bad show, actually, for a robot. No. That's what I did for my uh, yeah. 600 points for our schools. Yeah. Uh, kept the boys in, threw in, threw in a great eagle, and gave Legolas a horse, I believe. Yeah. Or, or gave Romil a cloak. Yeah, makes sense, makes sense. Um, so they do they do struggle a bit. What's really wonderful is are the new plastic models for the eagles. Yeah, very nice. Absolutely gorgeous. Much, much better, better than these old metal ones. Much better than the old metal ones, and much better than the fine cast guajia, which yeah. is pretty awful. So a lot of people actually try and use the plastic eagles as guajia. Which is totally acceptable, I think. I think so too, you know, as long as you make it obvious. Eagle, eagles and eagle. Like, yeah, as long as you can make it obvious for your opponent, maybe base him nicely or yeah, something. Just something, something a bit different. Something that's a little bit different, that's absolutely fine. Um, quite a few great eagle armies out there as well. Yeah, Ian Spiller. Yeah. And, no, not Ian Spiller. Yeah, Ian Spiller used them, and as did Alistair. Yeah, I've got, um, I've got about five eagles as well. Too many eagles. <laughs> yeah, they look, they, they look cool, I don't need them. Right? I did like the idea of it. Um, especially with the likes of a Radagast who we've not talked about yet. Yeah. Yeah, the um, well, he, healing he's, he's not in there, but yeah. Healing them. <laughs> then there is the Ents, who obviously you meant to take with Treebird. Uh -huh. 120 points. Yeah, do do so quite expensive, yeah, so he's a monster of course. Uh, he moves six inches, um, which again, probably do a little bit more. Uh, but he is fight seven, four plus shoot value, which will make a difference when you're doing your throw stone. Strength eight, very good. Defense eight, very good. Three attacks, three wounds, courage six. I look at that and I think, if you, if you just took that strength down to six and of course I did the fly there that would be a good eagle style yes, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> that'd be a good because all of a sudden you've got your three attacks which is so important yeah. um, you've got your three attacks and courage six is very very good we've got the uh, same same four rules as uh, tree bed so terror woodland creature break stone throw stone yep yeah. and uh, we don't see many of these guys out there no, although I did play at the Throne of Schools, it was the day we got a draw when I was very, very rough the next morning. Yep. It was Treebeard, like six Ents, Mary Pippin. Six Ents? Or something like that, not six Ents. It was six hundred points. like four Ents or something, three Ents. It felt like a lot of Ents. Yeah. I couldn't One Ent. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely more. It's like, it's like, it's like a lad goes out on, a group of lads goes out on the night out and like yeah. gets beaten up by a couple of lads. It's like, there were loads there of them. There were 20 of them, mate. There was 20 Ents. <laughs> Um, we don't tend to see these around loads, although interesting, interesting model that comes out there. And if that you... plastic kit's not very nice, I don't like it's it. It's not very nice. I don't like it. No, nah. It looks like cardboard tubes. Not oh, really. Up. Look at it. It's awful. Yeah, but it looks like one from the movie. <laughs> That's all it's representing. One of them from the movie. The thing is, is that the they pick the worst one. <laughs> they used to. Well, there, there used to be other versions. Yeah, but they, well, they look more like tree men from fantasy. We certainly did. If you want a really good quality ent looking creature, tree man. you should get a tree man and you can get this from Shadow and Flame. Yeah, um, I think they're out of it, but they do a willow man and a birch, a birch tree giant and a, um, a willow tree giant, yeah. which are gorgeous. Very, very so nice. go and go and check those out. Uh, I have played with these before. Again, they suffer from what most big things do, especially when they're not on mine, is that eventually they're not going to roll a six. And they will get chopped. They will get chopped up, especially with piercing strike. Yeah. One of your favourites coming up next. The most underpointed warrior in the game. Oh. You know what it is already. Look up from your painting. It's the Woes' Warrior. The Woes' Warrior. Okay, so what do these guys do? So they're seven points. She's pretty cheap. It's very cheap. Uh, movement five, errata to be six. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Because they're men. Okay, yeah. Not dwarves. Yeah. Uh, fight three with a three plus shoot value. Yeah. Strength three, defense three, one attack, one wound, courage three. Doesn't sound amazing at the moment. Not fantastic. No, spear and a poison blowpipe is their war gear. Mm -hmm. So that profile's currently Five points. Uh -huh. Three plus shoot better than normal. Yep. Uh, the poison blowpipe, obviously, uh, as I said earlier, 
12 inch range, strength 2, rerolls once to wound. It's pretty good. They've got woodland creature. Stalk unseen, so elven cloaks. Okay, so. Which for a troop points. is 5 points. So currently they're costing you 0 points just for their war gear. And then they get hate orc folk, which is the plus 1 to wound against orc, orc iron goblins. Which is very, very handy. So before you even look at the profile, well, just from war gear and special rules, they are 1, 2, 7. They should cost nine points with that just from the basic stat line. Yep. But they're seven points, so they're dirt cheap. Yep, they are very, very cheap. Now, you can also see, uh, very like, immediately see, quite a good role for these guys with them having the Elven Cloak. They can sit behind a battle line with they've got a spear and the poison blow pipe. They can be. They, they've got that mid range threats, they're a spear support, and I, I'm surprised they're not more used with like Guards of the Fountain Court or Khazar Guard. Royal Guard. Yeah. Royal, Royal, Royal Guard. Write that down. Yeah. <laughs> well, that is the Woses, and they've done very well for me in the past, and a lot of people else like to use them as well. Yeah, and they're, they're cool, interesting right. models. They're, they're very different from a lot of the other aesthetic, else, yeah. um, but not in a way which makes it's you not talk. No, I'm talking. And that is the end of the Wanderers of the Wild list, and you might be thinking that might be the end of this video, but oh no, we're going to go straight into the White Council. Now, yeah. it's key that we start off with the White Council warband rules. Yes, very much so. So, the White Council has actually got a huge, huge list of heroes to. to draw from. It's a uh, huge we'll list. We'll only be discussing three of them though because they're three that we've not yet discussed. The rest we have discussed in various videos. So they can take 12 heroes. Mm -hmm. uh, in addition to these three that we'll talk about, you can also select Gandalf the Grey, Celeborn, Curden, Glorfindel, Eristor, Elrond, Thranduil, Arwen, Legolas, and I believe Eldan and Elra here. No, no, they're not. No, 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 they're definitely not in that list. No, no, no. Um, and they've got a special rule, one of purpose, when a White Council Warband member is within six inches of another White Council Warband member, they get plus one to the dice roll when attempting to resist magical power. Okay. So they'll resist even six on fives before yep. mine, so you know, you can reliably right roll one dice, two dice it. That's pretty handy. It's very good. That's really, really handy. And this, this is Hobbit era, yeah. uh, sorry, Lord of the Rings era White Council as well, so yep. the new profiles can't go into this list. Yeah, which is important to note. Yeah. Uh, and the first profile that we come to when we're discussing the old White Council, as it were, is Saruman the White. Now, of course, we have already... Um, very about nice, very nice profile. What was I can't, I'm trying to think of the Italian word that you usually say. Uh, um, like Ciabella. Very beautiful. Yeah. You're beautiful. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks, gorgeous. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Um, There's something yeah. you say, usually. There is something you do. It's in films. It's like some kind of dream that you've had. No. <laughs> not, like, not that you say Giggle that it. is a common thing oh, that people nice. do. Not that, no, not that you say. Forget it. You know what? <laughs> Comment below. That is a thing that people do. I know what you do. I'm just winding you up. I'm just, I, I can't think of it either. Stupid hat. <laughs> <laughs> I think of that hair. You can live with that. That's why it's on video. <laughs> Pick it up, please. Go pick it up. 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 No. That means something good. Okay. Uh, strength 4, defense 5, 1 attack, 3 wounds, crew 7, 3 might, 6 will, 3 face. We've seen that profile before. Yeah. Get off the grey. And. Um, evil one. Oh, yes, yeah. Yeah, so it's the wizard profile, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. It's the wizard profile. We've seen that profile before. It's a standard wizard profile. I literally just said that before I read the profile. I wasn't listening to you. I'm still, I'm still struck by the fact that everyone's seen my hair. <laughs> Uh, so staff, uh, sorry, staff wise he gets to take war gear. War gear gets to take staff, which we use as two-handed weapon and can stun. 
Yeah. And he's got the option to take a horse. Which he does. He probably will do this guy. Ten points. Very good. So it's 160. Still cheaper than Gandalf with much, much more threat. And it works very well in synergy with a couple of his things. Yeah. So Staff of Power, obviously you can use a three point will per turn whilst he's got his staff. The voice of Curian here. The range of Saruman Stamfast is 12 inches rather than six and affects other heroes. Very, That's very good. Very good. That's very, very good. So I think about if, you, if you can chain that up with 12 inches, hero at the, at the end of that 12 inches, then gets their stand fast, you can move and then do it as well. So you get the huge range. And all of a sudden you can see how that could work quite well in a good all hero list. Yeah, so he's screwing on some trouble. Just everyone else passes. Very, very good. Uh, now he's got consuming rivalry. It's a rule that is often forgotten about because the two don't tend to come together. Mm -hmm. Uh, because they're quite expensive. Quite expensive, so you usually pick one of the others. Uh, Saruman will never move as part of a heroic move called by Gandalf and will never accept strength and will. Mm -hmm. Either. Okay, yeah, it makes so, absolute sense from the top uh, point. A nice little bit of fluff just yeah. to say, you know, I'm, I'm not going to have Gandalf tell me what to do. But it's not going to have a massive effect in your games and tournaments. Yeah. And then we come to sort of the, the main part, of course, which gives the wizards their, their the, oomph, yeah, which definitely. is the magical powers. I uh, will start things off. He's got an immobilize, two plus, okay. And we've seen that before. We saw that. We have seen that before with the Gandalf the White. However, <laughs> however, hold the phone. It's 18 inch range. 18 inch range. And 18 inches. Ridiculous. That's a long way. That's very long. And then you've got a horse to move on top of that. So that's a potential 28 inch threat. Threat range. For immobilize and commander. Which well. is over half the board. Yeah. He can, he, can, he can do what he needs to do. He certainly can do. He certainly can do. Uh, he's also got Terrifying Aura on a 2 plus. Yeah. Which, you know, to start the game. Start the game. Put that up before you're in range to do it. Yep. Um, command. Again. 18 inches and a 3 plus. Yeah. 3 plus command. So, so, so you can one dice that. Yep, yeah, that is one of the that's gotta be one of the best best, best uh, synergy of things in the game. At that range as well. 18 inches, you know, on his horse, he might move forward to five, come back five, so 23 inches to safely push something away or bring it in. It's it's very difficult to play against, yeah. very tough to defend against. Definitely. Because it means that constantly your opponent has the ability to get the jump on you yeah. or to take things out of the game when really you need them to be in the game. So it forces you to be a lot more aggressive. And I think that's one of the things that Tarim on the White does. It forces you to be. You need to get there more, quick. Yeah. Because otherwise he's going to pick you off from range. Yeah. And then he's got the uh, 12 inch Sorcerer's Blast on a 4 plus. <laughs> Four plus, fantastic. Easily one diceable. Easily one diceable, and it's bear in mind that he's got six will to do this and a three point every single turn. Yeah. You can see what a huge effect that Saruman yeah. can have on the game. Until he needs to, he can one dice all those spells. Yeah. And if he really needs something to go off, that's when he can chuck more in. Yeah. Unlike Gandalf, who you know, you're like, oh, I, I could really do with this immobilize this turn. Yeah. I need to put two into it. He yeah. can go, oh yeah, I'll throw one dice at it. Yeah. I'm probably going to get it, and if I really need to, I can use mine. And it's not just that; it's the fact that there. I know it sounds like a weird thing to say, but there's a big difference between being 150 points and being able to go to 160 points on the horse and being 170 going to 180. Yeah. It makes a massive, massive difference in the game, especially sort of on the size games that we tend to play. So Saruman the White, even the old version, is a big, 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 big thumbs up. And he appears in a lot of sort of tournament winning or top tier table lists. Yeah, and it's the board control that you can give, the threat range that you can give, and the fact that he forces your opponent to do things that they wouldn't necessarily want to do, make it very uncomfortable for you. Then uh, one of your, one of yours. Have we spoken about Galadriel Protectress? Not the Protectress. No, um, okay. it's a different profile. Different profile. Mm -hmm. Not a huge fan of this one, personally myself. Uh, so 125 points. So same as the new one, five points cheaper than the magic version. Uh, movement six can't be mounted because the White Castle are meant to be all on foot. Uh, fight six, three plus shoot value. Strength three, defense four, three attacks, three ruins, three seven, three three three. Okay. So the strength three is her real let down here yeah. and as well as the defense four she gets some decent stuff with her war gear she gets armor and nenya so she gets to re-roll failed fate points mm -hmm. uh, because this terror has woodland creature and has war aspects so all enemy models within six inches of gladriel for minus one penalty to their courage wow so effectively so, harbinger of evil but harbinger of good <laughs> yeah tiny little range tiny little six range. which is good for things charging her yep. that are on foot because they are minus one courage and she goes 
Wars of Terror. Mm-hmm. Um, however, with Fury and most things being decent courage or bodyguard, it's not as great as it could be. Uh, her magical power, she's got one blinding light on a two plus. And that's it. For 125 points, you can get a lot more for her. For those. Yeah, I think so. Like yeah. the, the, the new version. The new version is much, much better than her. Same points, uh, same stat line, gets blinding light for free, has fortify spirit, banish. Yeah. And it's almost like it's the profile that this should have been. Yeah, yeah. In other yeah. ways. You know, you're paying 125 points for a sort of uh, this war aspect kind of one. Yeah. And yet still only strength three and these things. Yeah. Not really got the spells to affect the game. But it's a lot of points for blind, blinding light only and maybe a survivable character that's not going to do much. And with three will, obviously you need to, cast, you need to probably spend one to make that uh, channel. Two plus to cast. And then any Wraith can just sap will very easily get rid of your playing lights, so it's, it's almost pointless to take. Yep. In my opinion. Yeah. Even in a White Council list. So we're not a huge fan of Galadriel Protectress of Lothlorien. Um, however, finally, finally, we've got a guy that I actually quite like. I like this profile. It's Radagast Brown. Radagast Brown. This so. is the old guy. 150 points. Yep. Same as. Let's point this out. It's same as Sam and the White. Yeah. This, this is where very different. This is where Radagast sort of loses out when you've got the same points available to both of them. You tend to go for Sam, but we'll see why now. Yeah. So same same. Stat line, wizard stat line, wizard stat line, comes with staff and a 200 weapon. Um, take a horse, can take a horse, 10 points. He can't take the sleigh because uh-huh. he's Lord of the Rings era. Yep, um, and he also can't take Sebastian as well, yeah. which is a real letdown for him. Uh, Master of Birds, he can draw like science center anywhere on the battlefield. And um, one with nature, he can walk across all areas of difficult terrain as if it were clear and counts as wearing an elven cloak. So let's talk about a little bit before we go into spells about how those special rules can affect the game. Yeah. So being Master of board, uh, Birds and the fact that you can see anywhere across the battlefield and the fact Cast that spells around corners. Exactly. So you can hide this guy and it almost becomes worth not taking him on the horse, which is a weird bit of a test for us to give. Yeah, to benefit from the elven cloak. Benefit from the elven cloak, chuck him around things, getting behind things and again have an effect on the game. But let's look at his magical powers because he's a very different kind of role, more, much more defensive. Yes, yeah. So he's got Panic Steed on a 2+. plus. Which you think it's an offensive spell really? Is it? Yeah, it's to get rid of your mount. Yep. Uh, he can channel it so it affects, I think it's within 3 inches of the target. Yep, so good against all cavalry armies yeah, if you yeah. channel it. Can be grim. Don't fall into that trap. No. <laughs> so, someone has done, haven't they? Uh, I don't remember somebody putting up a picture of um, oh, really? Yeah, that they, they played their, their Royal Cavalry Rohan for the first time versus Radagast, and I think they bunched all their cavalry together and it channeled Panic Steed. <laughs> Awful. Uh, terrifying Aura on himself, 2 plus. Uh, immobilize on a 3 plus. That's good. It's decent. Uh, renew on a 3 plus. Which That's is good. Right. Okay, so that gives you a wound back. Yeah, which can't be cast on himself. Yep. Uh, and Aura of Dismay, so that, that's five inch, uh, sorry, five plus to cast, and is a terror bubble around him within six inches. Yeah. Twelve inches if he channels it. Yeah. So uh, you know it's pretty good. It's, it's pretty good. You know, it's got a mobilizer gives you a bit of uh, battlefield control. Panic Steed is a bit of aggression there. He can protect himself with terrifying aura and renew, and also in a multi wound or an all hero kind of force, you probably see him with eagles to be honest, because yeah. he can give them those wounds back, which might be quite tough to take off of them because of their high defense, uh, and then Aura just may obviously can be reasonably helpful as well. Do we see many Radagast of Brown in the old one? Not the old one. He gets taken as the Hobbit era, either on the sleigh where he actually gets some real combat potential, mm-hmm. or now on Giant Eagle. Yeah, Giant Eagle, which is, Eagle yeah. which is a really, really good strong option, which strong. changes him entirely. And it's also the fact that even if you take him on foot, you can get Sebastian for five points, so all of a sudden you've got an extra Two attack. attacks. Two even attacks. On, on horse, on the charge, he's three attacks. Three attacks. Six on the knockdown. So it just gives him that little bit of something which maybe some of the other wizards yeah. can, can uh, collect. Whereas this profile, if you were going between Radagast and Saruman, Saruman's got a very strong use immediately. Yep. Radagast is a bit more situational. It certainly is, certainly is. And uh, that takes us to the end of the uh, the White Council. Now there are a few scenarios in the back of this, and as ever we have always talked about the scenarios. What we'll do is just a quick run through. You've got the Battle of Bywater, um, so that's pretty much the Shire guys when they come back. Yep. 
Um, Ruffians versus Hobbit Militia. Yeah, with Sharky and Worm. A uh, bit of a battle there. Um, there's the Last Alliance, which is of course a big, huge, huge battle. Like it's thousands of points. Uh, 1,200 points from Evil, including excluding Sauron. Yeah, so big, big game. Yeah, big, big game on the slopes of Mount Doom. Uh, you've also got Battle of Eastgate as well, which is probably one that we can do. Yeah, by trying you, to get into. You've got the uh, you've got the models for that. Yeah. Um, and did, uh, is it a modified version of that that Tom and Damien yeah. did for um, Essentially, yeah. SBG magazine? Essentially, it is. Um, you've also got the Attack of Webertop, which we've done, done the Fellowship version of. Yep. Flights of the Ford, which we've done the Fellowship version of, so go and check out our Fellowship campaign. Amon Hen, which we've done. Yes, yeah. Uh, both, both, version both, versions. Versions. both versions. And last March of the Ants, which I did with Here in Street. Immediately you can see that there's a ton of scenarios in there. And that's because the book lends itself quite well for scenario play because you've got the fellowship. You've got so many things in there as well. You can get so many different factions. I think this is probably the best. best. Which is probably why it's the hardest to get hold of. It is the best. It is now out of production. Yep. So you will struggle to find these out there, but do keep an eye out. There are a few independent. Um, hobby shops out there that you tend to be able to pick these things up because they're not like still have them, yeah. Yeah, um, but if you haven't got one of these, do try and get it, and it probably is going to end up costing you a bit more. Yeah, you know, 20, 30, 40. I, I'd be expecting to pay about 30 pounds nowadays. Yeah, about 30 pounds for one of these. So unlucky if you didn't manage to get one. But brilliant. Well, I hope you've enjoyed Free People's Week. Have you enjoyed Free People's Week? Yeah, it's been good. More like, been like, more like Free People's Month for us, at yeah. least. <laughs> yes, More than a month and a half. Stretched out for us, but you guys have got it in a week, in the weird way that YouTube works. Yeah, the way that this works. Yeah. And uh, if you enjoyed that week, then you've got another one to look forward to, because our final themed week is, of course, the Mordor. Mordor, which is going to be really odd, because we've talked about most of the stuff in there already. Yeah, so we're probably going to have to do a bit of organising before that. Don't expect that immediately after this. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. probably going to be a few weeks off, and we'll try and get some back yeah. reports and stuff in yes, yeah. uh, before that. So, as ever, guys, don't forget to comment, like, share, and subscribe. Support me on Patreon, like us on Facebook, and follow us on Twitter. Support your Hobbit hobby. And happy strategy battle gaming, guys.